So thank you for coming today. Happy holidays. Can you believe it's already here <laughs> or it's coming anyway? I just, my name is Andrea Nikolai and I work with the University of Florida in the extension. I'm a family and consumer sciences agent and a registered dietitian. And I'm really glad you're here. I have to tell you, I got so excited about um, Thanksgiving and the holidays. I cooked a turkey last night. So just uh, <laughs> getting a head start on everything, <laughs> but maybe I'll get another one next week. So, but glad you're here and hopefully this will give you some tips or ideas for your holiday meal. All right. So that's me, like I said, I'm, my name is Andrea Nikolai and I work in Polk County then, and I'm with UF and Polk County. And then if you haven't used Zoom lately, um, maybe COVID's getting better, right? But if you haven't, you can kind of hover over the top or the bottom of the screen and you should be able to see um, a chat box. And if you don't, it might be in that dot, dot, dot section with more. So if you have any questions or comments, um, like Steve just put good morning. So good morning, Steve. Um, just like, uh, that's how you could do that. So we'll be done. And I also have a really short evaluation that I'll send you guys following this webinar. And I really do appreciate your feedback because it helps me understand how I can do this job better. So thank you for that. So the three big things you're going to um, we'll talk about today will be how to make over your favorites by keeping the flavor and then losing those extra calories, healthy and delicious sides and desserts for your menu, and then using those leftovers. So sometimes, you know, we have the meal and, um, you know, some of them get gone, but then there's the few remaining ones. So just ideas for how to use those. So maybe you don't have to throw them away and you can actually enjoy them again in maybe a different way. So just uh, remembering that the focus is the choose my plate, kind of like a good guide that you can use for any uh, meal, including Thanksgiving, just to kind of gauge, you know, if you're getting the different food groups. So maybe you won't have fruits at your Thanksgiving, but you could double up on vegetables to get those same antioxidants because the fruits and vegetables are where you get those. So maybe like half your plate aim for that and then you got the grains and the protein. So grains would be the starches. So you can figure out what you wanna put there. So just like what I just talked about. So trying to fill half of your plate then with vegetables and fruit, like one fourth of it with starchy things such as um, the potatoes, pasta, corn, rice, beans, bread, and then a fourth with that lean protein, which could be like the ham or the turkey, maybe just for instance, and then trying to get some dairy. Maybe if you don't get it at the meal, trying to have like maybe that for breakfast before the, um, before your meal. So here are some basic substitutions. So you might have a recipe that's been handed down for many generations and you love it, but maybe you just want to make it a little bit um, better for your heart. So there's some things that you can swap out that oftentimes aren't noticeable, but can really decrease the calories and the fat. So one of them, like I think one, this one's probably my favorite, it's just cream and then using evaporated skim milk instead. Um, just, it can make quite a difference and it's still pretty creamy. So sour cream, uh, you can use low fat or fat-free sour cream or plain Greek yogurt. If you've ever tried those side by side, they actually taste pretty similar. There's, um, instead of white or brown sugar, just using one third or one half less. Uh, my mom is great at testing recipes and she'll start with the normal one and then try to reduce the sugar and you can you can find that you can get very very similar results by just or um or identical you know where you wouldn't even notice just by reducing the sugar a little bit so that can be a key one the cream cheese trying to use low fat or fat free or neufchatel um or pureed low fat cottage cheese and then there's buttermilk so with that one, you could use low fat or fat free buttermilk or skim milk with vinegar or lemon juice added to make your own. And then mayonnaise, you could go with that Greek yogurt again. Uh, the Greek yogurt people, they often have like magnets that they'll give out and how you can use Greek yogurt in different ways. And they really suggest it in place of things like sour cream and mayonnaise as like a really workable option. So they're, um, they're on top of their advertising, but it does work. So. And then you get some calcium and protein, which you don't get in the mayonnaise or the sour cream. So butter, just trying to reduce it a little bit or using the smart spread, those things. So then um, let's give this a little bit of a try just with some of your recipes. Looks like my turkey last night, but not quite. I didn't have Brussels sprouts, that would have been good. So healthier homemade green bean casserole. So you might know this one, <laughs> right? Um, the traditional one, it was made by this lady from the Campbell's Soup Company in about 1955. And so a single serving of that original green bean casserole. So that's the one with that cream of mushroom soup and French fried 
um, onions and then the green beans that has about 231 calories and 15 grams of fat in a serving. So maybe you could um, just try to reduce that a little bit by maybe using crushed corn flakes instead of the fried onions using that healthy request um, cream of mushroom soup, like the one that they have that's 98% fat free. You could decrease a lot of calories there and still get a great product. Could use fresh green beans and you could also use something like um, a lady was talking to me and she's going to make green bean casserole from scratch using the sliced onion mushrooms, I mean, just to make like her own sauce. And you could use chicken broth and like a smart balance or something like that and actually make a sauce with that and use whole wheat um, breadcrumbs maybe for the top. Um, and then, or you could just try something new, maybe just even like fresh sauteed green beans with slivered almonds, or it's really good with dried cr cranberries and walnuts. I've done that for a lot of classes and people seem to really like it. And so something like that, a, a serving would only have 35 calories um, and zero grams of saturated fat. So it would be way really good on your heart. You get a good vegetable in there. So sweet potato casserole, right? You're like, these are they're delicious, right? Remembering sweet potatoes have sweetness already so that you're already coming out like, you know, you got a head start. But try using things like vanilla and cinnamon to help make enhance their sweetness. Both of those have been found to enhance sweetness and both of those have zero calories and cinnamon has a lot of health benefits. So you're doing well with that. But you could try mashing the sweet potatoes with vanilla, cinnamon, salt, and then eggs and kind of make that on the bottom. And so then you could add a little bit of brown sugar a little bit of a smart spread and kind of, so you have that as the bottom and then you could add something like um, toasted pecans or walnuts for the top topping. And that would be, um, and then you could do or a drizzle of maple syrup and then bake it. And it's, it's really good. I have brought that recipe for a lot of potlucks and people seem to really like it. And then just thinking outside the box, kind of like that picture there where you see the mashed potatoes kind of on the base and then maybe some roasted Brussels sprouts on top, toasted walnuts and some feta. So it's like, there's a ton of fun ways to do it that don't have to be, you know, um, so hard on your heart. So mac and cheese, right? Everybody loves this one. So you just uh, replace the cream then with that evaporated skim milk can help a lot. Or you could just, I've read recipes where they replace it with skim milk and broth, like um, a combination of those two. You could add veggies to it um, and reduce the butter. All of those would be, great options. So I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but you could make mac and cheese muffins, then they're individually portioned. I've done them um, with, if you guys have heard of that cauliflower, California mix of vegetables, the one with the cauliflower, the broccoli and the carrots, it's a mix and you um, cook that and then you puree it in a blender and you mix it in with the mac and cheese. And I've tried it with a lot of people and you would never know there's those vegetables in there. So it's kind of a fun way to get it a really creamy sauce. Um, you know, you add cheese also, but it's just a great way to get the vegetables too. So you could also do it with butternut squash. I've just, um, before the class was rereading some of the recipes that I had looked at and you can make a really good creamy sauce with that butternut squash and then like some vegetable broth, a little bit of milk, and then you add the cheese in that. Or um, there's a lot of recipes that they don't even try to hide them. You know, they put the veggies right in. They put spinach, mushrooms and broccoli, edamame, peas go really well. And if you see in the bottom picture there, those are actually white beans. And as you can see, they could probably go pretty well in there and give them a fiber boost also. So now we're talking about stuffing, right? So um, just thinking a little bit outside the box again maybe using whole grain bread or using just a different grain altogether to kind of get that like stuffing feel. So maybe using something like quinoa or farro, and then you add in like onions, celery, walnuts, cranberries, cute butternut squash, kale. I have a friend who does that. So say you have your own stuffing uh, recipe that you really love to use. Maybe you could consider just adding one or two of the add-ins just to help give it um, a little bit more nutrition and the cube butternut squash works really well. You can get it at the store in um, the freezer section already cubed and sometimes in the fresh section too. So it's already you know ready to go for you and you can just um, cook it and dump it in. And then you'd have like cubes of butternut squash and they usually go really well with the stuffing um, and things like celery and onions, just adding those in, that's a win also. Or you could just continue, like think about stuffing something else. Maybe you could do a, a acorn squash 
So this is a great uh, meal itself, or you could use it um, for some of the leftovers, or it's a really good side dish too. So you'd be cutting that squash in half then. So that's what an acorn squash looks like on the right. Cut it in half, um, you get that seeds out, you just use a spoon and scoop it out. And then you put it on, um, on an oven sheet, um, the cut sides down, and then you roast that until it's tender. And then you can flip it upside down and then you stuff it with whatever you would like. And so I found that, you know, just, I was looking at like a thousand recipes. Usually they use a grain, something crunchy and then something flavorful, like really flavorful. So um, one idea would be quinoa and pecans. You could do kale and spinach or ground turkey and mushrooms. Or you could do like barley, onions, apples, lentils, cranberries, walnuts. You could do quinoa, mushrooms, apples, cranberries. <laughs> so you can kind of see how you can have a lot of fun with that. Just thinking about a grain that you might like and then adding maybe something crunchy or maybe some like dried cranberries or dried apricots or something like that. Or you could just stuff it with apples. Um, that's also delicious. So got some ideas there. And then just thinking about those veggie options and they found that people who have more vegetable options eat more vegetables. So it's kind of like when you go to a buffet, um, a lot of people eat more just because they wanna try multiple things. So if you could have a lot of vegetables, then you kind of end up, you know, people just end up accidentally eating more vegetables. So it's a win. <laughs> so some seasonal favorites then would be um, roasted Brussels sprouts topped with balsamic vinegar. You could mix in dried cranberries and toasted walnuts. That would be um, a hit. A roasted asparagus, that's an easy one too. A lot of people just put salt and pepper on it, a little bit of olive oil, and then put it in the oven until it's kind of crisp and it's really delicious. It, like the, baking it or roasting it, it brings out the sweetness in the vegetables. So that's why talking about that can really help, I guess, or doing that way. Spinach and kale salad. So I don't know if um, kale ever seems kind of like um, rough to you. I, for, I remember when I first tried it and I was like just chewing a long time, but the thing about kale salad is that you can massage it. So it's almost like you spray your hands with olive oil or with, um, <laughs> you're like, it's hard to spray with olive oil, but just get olive oil or use a Pam cooking spray and then kind of massage it, actually massage it, um, the kale with your hands and it kind of like breaks down and just makes it more of a um, kind of tender, I guess, leaf and easier to eat and more enjoyable probably. So um, you can do that to make your kale salad and then you could add like cut apples, toasted nut, dried fruit, and then use a light vinaigrette or a combination that goes really well together with whatever green is the pear, walnut, and goat cheese. Those three go really well or like feta. And then you could do butternut squash, walnut, pomegranate. So they're kind of using things that are in season. And so that can really help a lot too. So just continuing on the doubling the veggie options. So seasonal favorites like roasting butternut or acorn squash, like we were talking about, um, mixed peeled squash pieces pizza, <laughs> with uh, slices of peeled apple and bake with a dash of butter or cinnamon. So that one would be just like, you can get those um, in the store already peeled. Otherwise you can just kind of stick it in the microwave for a little bit. Stick, poke the squash and stick it in the microwave just for like a minute or two. And then it's way easier to peel. And then you can peel that and just um, put it with apples. Um, that's something my mom did a lot growing up and I, people really like it. It's just like you just put cut up apples with the cut up squash and they go really well together. So broccoli, you can just cook that one from frozen and you have a simple solution there. Um, and then cabbage and apple slaw, those go really well together. You see that on the picture on the top right. And a veggie tray with pumpkin hummus might be really seasonal also. And um, <laughs> and then we got potatoes, right? So you guys know about this one. So they're definitely, they're not a bad option. It's just what we tend to add to them. So we already have a lot of things with the carbohydrate grain section. So it's kind of just adding another one. So maybe you would consider trying um, mashed cauliflower. And if you're a mashed potatoes fan, Maybe you could try half and half. I have found that in, with mashed potato lovers, you can do that and get away with it. And then it would be um, lower carbs when you're already having so many carbohydrates. So just getting in a cancer fighting vegetable in there. So you could use like fresh or frozen cauliflower if you do that. Um, you just cook it. So you wait, um, cook it however you have bought it um, until it's soft. And then you puree it and add maybe some low sodium broth, um, some healthier butter, or you can use Parmesan and garlic. 
So that's one of my favorite ones is with the Parmesan. And then you could also try roasted new potatoes. So it's a new potatoes. Um, it's exactly what they sound like. It's a potato that's newly harvested. So usually you let potatoes cure after you've harvested them to get like the, th the skin thicker and um, so that they can last longer. But the new potatoes have thinner skin. So usually you can leave it on. Um, and so red potatoes usually are similar to the new potatoes. So you can use those interchangeably or you could try like roasting sweet potatoes or maybe you can do like some of each, you know, um, just some ideas. So like, or you could just give potatoes the day off completely. So just looking online and just a lot of things, you know, mashed um, cauliflower is definitely the number one substitute for potatoes. It's, um, you know, using that fresher frozen cauliflower, steamed or roasted, then you whip it or blend it till creamy. And then, so it's like blended cauliflower and then you add in your choice of whatever you found that works for the best for you. And maybe you'll try a couple of different ideas. Maybe you can split up the mashed cauliflower and then do one one way and one the other way and see which one you like better. But some ideas could be adding like garlic hummus or a little bit of olive oil or butter, Parmesan cheese, garlic, garlic is a really good one too, plain Greek yogurt, fat-free cream cheese, or like chives, or try like rosemary and thyme. So these are like a good idea. So one serving of mashed cauliflower has about 39 calories if you add some Parmesan cheese or something like that, and one gram of fat. So then the traditional mashed potatoes, I just Googled what would that, that would be with like the milk and the butter. A serving of that is usually around 237 calories and nearly nine grams of fat. So if you can just make a couple swaps and, you know, not with everything, you don't have to do it with everything, but maybe you'll find something that you really, really enjoy. That's maybe a healthier option and you can make that a tradition. So moving on. So we're giving the potatoes a day off. The other options might be mashed parsnips, mashed turnips, mashed rutabaga, <laughs> mashed butternut squash or acorn squash and mashed beets. So I saw one lady, she actually had just a bunch of mashed sides for her Thanksgiving and she had like beets, you know, it's like all different colors of these like mashed things. It's kind of a fun idea, you know? So you could dice roast them, roasting them would bring out that sweetness or you could, um, and then mash them or you could just, you know, dice them and mash them and they can be prepared the day ahead. So that would be a really nice one. Also, did you guys know rutabagas? They're a cross between a wild cabbage and a turnip. So that's pretty cool. And then the, um, Turnips are the ones that are more white and purple, where the rutabagas are more yellow. So, um, yeah, just some <laughs> just some tips, things I learned a long time ago, and I just really I thought they might be helpful. Okay, so side of fruit. Then, if you're gonna do fruit, they found like pineapple. It's refresh refreshingly delicious with heavier foods. So maybe you just cut up a pineapple. It's usually a a hit wherever you go. Um, and if you use fresh, it actually has that bromelain, and that can help with um, your joints and things like that. So it's a win. Grapes, you could do ambrosia, which is oranges and shredded coconut. So you could do something like oranges, pineapple, banana, and then you put in some OJ concentrate and shredded coconut, and that could be maybe a dessert. So kind of a lighter thing, but maybe you're like, okay, I want real dessert here. It's a holiday. So maybe you could try something like a Greek um, yogurt, chocolate mousse, which would be the top here. That sounds really good. Something I want really want to try, haven't yet baked pears, like you could do caramel and chocolate dip pears, and there's a recipe at that Pear Bureau Northwest. They have a lot of good recipes. Poached pears, you could do crustless pears and pistachio tart, baked pears with walnut oat crumble. You could do all these same things with apples too. It just, um, you know, both of them are in season. So chocolate cake, just to give you an idea, a single slice can have anywhere from 400 to 970 calories. So that's, you know, like your whole meal doubled. So instead, maybe you could just, you know, if you want to keep the cake, maybe you do a sliver of that. And then also the chocolate mousse, um, maybe the chocolate mousse uh, just would help if it just only had a, it only has 130 calories per serving. And so it has that Greek yogurt. So it has protein as well. Um, so that can help with the digestive system. So <laughs> something we all need after Thanksgiving. So so other ideas for dessert would be that beet chocolate cake with chocolate avocado frosting. That's a picture of it right there. Um, my family liked it. It was really good. It's very uh, moist. And then stuffed apples. You could do stuffed apples with walnut dates, little maple syrup. You could do apple crisp. You could do pumpkin pie made over. There's like crustless kinds and things like that. Yeah, actually pretty good for you. Um, some other ideas would be on the far left, there's chickpea blondies. Those actually have um, pureed chickpeas in them. 
There's pumpkin almond granola bites. And then we have wheat, uh, walnut date balls with cocoa. So it's just kind of like something different, you know, to give people um, something fun and delicious that they could try. Then there's a blueberry bake on the far right. So coming to the last slides here, what if you have leftovers, right? So I was just talking about, you know, the idea is maybe, I don't know about you, but the turkey tends to go the first, like where I am, but that's probably because I love turkey. But if you have leftovers of different things, here are some ideas. So we got the soup and the sandwiches, um, which you probably, you know, might've thought of, but open face turkey and ham melt on whole grain bread, that could be a great option. Wawa has some ideas for you. The, there's like a hoagie they have um, where they put on hot turkey, stuffing, cranberry sauce, gravy, and added mashed sweet potatoes or mashed potatoes. So that could be a way to use up the leftovers just a different way. Your holiday plate in a bowl. I've seen that done. Crustless quiche. So you do something like um, it's pictured. It's like egg and milk. And then you put in whatever vegetables you had. Um, if you ended up doing the green beans or the Brussels sprouts, like cutting them up and then um, maybe using some of that turkey or ham and then putting that in there. Um, there's mashed potato muffins. So you could, they're mashed potatoes with one egg. Um, you top it with cheese, add some veggies. So that would be a way if you made mashed potatoes way, way over bulk or um, shepherd's pie. So that would be um, something, you know, it's usually a baked dish with ground or diced meat on it. And then a crust of um, mashed potatoes, but you could modify that with holiday leftovers. So it'd be using the vegetables that you have on the bottom, like whatever leftovers you have, the turkey, ham, whatever you ended up having. Um, and then you could put mashed sweet potatoes on the top. I've actually seen a layer of stuffing. Sometimes people put a layer of cranberry stuff and then like the mashed potatoes and their mashed sweet potatoes. Um, or an idea might be uh, um, some people, they were doing a poll and one lady, she puts just everything on a spinach salad that she just said she you know gets a bed of salad and then she just puts a little bit of all the leftovers on there. So at least, you know, she's getting a bunch of spinach with it too. So kind of a way to get happier veggies. So just a couple other ideas, leftovers, we got um, stuffing that acorn squash, like we were talking about, right? So you could take whatever leftovers you have and just stuff it in that squash and it's <laughs> probably gonna turn out delicious. So oatmeal, you could put that cranberry sauce in there and walnuts. So maybe you usually put in something else and maybe that could be your sweetener instead. It's also really good with leftover sweet potato casserole with oatmeal, just saying. Stuffing and veggie omelet, sweet potato and Greek yogurt parfait. So that's where they put like the sweet potato casserole leftovers with like Greek yogurt and then um, layer it. Looks really pretty in a glass too, but that would be a way to just kind of, you know, let your family enjoy the sweet potato casserole one more time in a different way. And so I just, um, here's just somebody's example of a kind of a dish she made, you know, like half the, half the vegetables and so that's all I have. So I just have that short webinar and I really do a, a short evaluation. I'm in trouble talking today. <laughs> I appreciate your feedback a lot. And then I have um, those two other foodie fun classes. So one next week, same time, same place. And then the week after that, just to get it in before Thanksgiving. So you know, maybe I can get you some other ideas. And then I'm also doing a canning class in December. Um, it also includes uh, herbal infused vinegar. So you get to take home three gifts. So I love you. Love to have you there. And so that's all I have. You guys have any questions? Let me look at the chat. Oh, okay. How long do you cook an acorn squash? Let me see. Does anyone know that offhand? I feel like it's a, a while. I'm going to look it up. I can find the recipe, right? <laughs> I think I jumped on like the longest way to get that answer. How about I, I put that on the thing when I send the evaluation about how long? I feel like it's over half an hour, maybe close to an hour. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Deidre. She said about 45 minutes. Okay. The beet cake? I will look for it. It was really good. I gotta tell you, <laughs> it was really fun to tell people what was in it after they ate it. Okay, so let me just run them back up here. Okay, so wondering about the acorn squash cooking time. And yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. Joanne's like, no, you can sing a part. I, I don't, I always know. Okay. And the beet cake. I have some of the recipes and I'll send a few of them to you guys. Some of them I like accumulated from a lot of different sites together just to give you ideas so I don't have like a general specific recipe, but I've seen a lot of people do it in healthy ways. So um, that'd be really, good. I need to get a website with the, all those good recipes. That would be a good one. Okay, so yeah, thank you guys. Thanks, Joanne. I suppose it, she was like, it depends on the size of the squash. So I'll give, I'll get the squash time and then look for the beet cake. And then maybe I'll try to find maybe about three other, oh, can I give you guys the mac and cheese with the veggies in it? Can I give you guys that one? And then the link to the chocolate mousse. I think that one's good. And then you guys can see what you think. So I really appreciate all you guys coming in for your support. Hopefully I'll see you next week. So thank you so much. I hope, yeah, have a good week, you guys.